separated from the command module Columbia and began its journey to the surface. Then we started our, uh, uh, our, our final descent. And I, I think uh, in, in many ways that was the most complex part of uh, the flight from our standpoint. Now, there were other complicated parts of the flight, but they had been demonstrated by other crews on previous flights. We, this was the first time we were getting to some, do something that, that had not been uh, previously tested, and so we, it was the time for us uh, to uh, put our very best efforts into getting a successful conclusion. There were problems crossing those last few miles, however. At various times during the descent, alarms sounded aboard Eagle, signaling a computer overload. Mission Control correctly predicted that the problem did not affect the landing radar and told the astronauts to proceed. Then, at less than 2,000 feet, the two astronauts realized Eagle's autopilot would deposit them in a rock-covered area surrounding a crater. At 300 feet, as Aldrin calmly continued to relay descent information, Armstrong took manual control of the lunar module, which had only 30 seconds of fuel remaining. Four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward, drift. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. We were around, oh, 30, 40 feet looking, looking for that smoother spot. And then uh, once we started settling on through, even though 30 seconds of fuel remaining had been called out by mission control, uh, I felt quite confident that Neil's expertise would get us on the ground. And sure enough, it did. Six and a half hours later, Armstrong left Eagle. He had prepared a speech only a few hours earlier. Like Armstrong himself, it was brief and concise. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The moon was a world of black and white and gray. The surface was even more compact than had been theorized. It was covered in a fine...